Welcome to 3D Amazon FBA. Today I'm going to talk about uh, how combating uh, people tanking the prices. Uh, I don't know about everybody else, but uh, it has been extremely stressful for me. Um, it seems like everything that I've been on for a long time, um, I've dealt with price tankers. There's an item I've been selling for, I think, three years now. And the price never got lower than $17.99, but it was usually at $19.99. And it, it sold like five or ten a month. It wasn't like something I was selling constantly. But I'd sell one every couple days, and I was happy because it cost me like $3. And, uh, you know, I was able to make like $7, $8 each, like ten times a month. It's like 30 bucks on the one item. And it was a bundle, like a like a two-pack. And now the price all of a sudden went from $19.99 to $12.95. Don't know why the price would drop $7 overnight, but it did. Um, there's some hot sauce I, was, I sell in a two, three, four, and a six pack. Um, the price dropped on all bundles, and they actually had different um, varieties, the same company, um, like a medium and a hot and a mild. And of all three flavors, the price went from like, say, $14 for the three pack to 11. The two pack dropped from like, 12 to 8, uh, the prices are just tanking on them. So many of my replenishable items, it's really kind of insane. I've lost uh, almost every replen from Walmart due to uh, the price tanking. There's still a few that I still uh, have managed to, to not have the price tank. But, uh, you know, before, because all of these were from Walmart, I was spending like $1,000 every time I'd walk in the door at Walmart, and now I'm spending like 200 that's how many um, bundles and variety packs and stuff where I've had the prices just suddenly just drop like a, like a ton of bricks. So what I'm doing to combat this is I'm actually sourcing Walmart much less than I ever have my entire time so on Amazon, which is like what, four and a half years, almost five years. Well, not quite five years, I think. Uh, you know, I didn't even go to Walmart last Saturday when I was doing my, my main sourcing trip. You know, and I went to the Super Walmart the other day because I had time to kill waiting to pick up my kids. You know, so what I'm doing is I'm going to different stores to look for new uh, to new things to sell. Uh, you know, going to World Market. You know, I don't really go to Target much. I don't usually find too much there lately. But I'm adding new stores. World Market's the main one. I'm doing more online uh, arbitrage to kind of combat, to look for uh, for new things to sell. Uh, like I found three new ASINs that I'm hoping will re be re replenishable items. From Walmart yesterday, I found um, two from World Market online. So that's what I'm doing today is probably more online arbitrage, looking for new things to, uh, to have replenishable. Uh, going to the grocery outlet more often. You know, they, they do really good. They always have in new stuff. You know, because they sell stuff that was either sold too many or are they made too many or it's like discounted stuff for whatever reason. You know, uh, so I'm going there more and I'm like looking harder there um, for for things to sell just to try to boost my, my amount of ASINs. Because typically I'm around five, 450, 500 ASINs and Amazon's really slow for some reason receiving lately. I was down to like 288 since the other day, and now I'm back up to 330. And I sent in some more stuff. I sent out two shipments this week. Um, but, you know, you do have to make sure that you uh, go to different stores looking for new stuff to sell. Uh, you know, that way you can just have a bigger variety. Because uh, that's really what you need to do to drive your sales anyways. The more ASINs you have, the more sales opportunities that you will have you know, kind of obvious reasons, but it's not something that people really consider. You want to have as many different items as possible to have the most opportunity to sell. Um, another thing that I'm doing too is I am going through, um, looking through my pricing. Um, this month I've had way more uh, things I took a loss on than I've ever had before, you know, due to price tanking. And I'm just clearing out that crap that, you know, has been sitting around that just isn't selling due to price tanking. I took a lot of hits this month so I could start uh, May off well. 
you know, because I'm paying storage fees on all this stuff that's been sitting around and I'm not making any money. So you might as well just bite the bullet sometimes, take the L's, take the money that you get remaining from, you know, the those products and uh, reinvest it in something that will make you money. You know, uh, things I kind of do, I'll make a video showing you guys how I decide when to drop my prices and, and all of that. I'll make that video and I'll post it up tomorrow. But, you know, clearing out your, your garbage inventory and getting in new stuff um, is good. You know, opening up more categories, you know, like a lot of people don't have uh, DVDs and stuff that they can sell. I've been selling a lot of DVDs from Big Lots, and I've been finding a couple here and there at the Dollar Tree. And that's another store. I don't typically source Dollar Tree very often, but um, I've added them to my routes. So if I can pick up one or two ASINs, I don't usually go in there and I spend 100 bucks. I'll usually go in there at the most, I'll spend 20 or 30 but if I can make 20, 30 bucks, you know, just to expand my uh, my inventory, um, I'm all for it. But, you know, DVDs are real easy to sell. You want to stay under like a 50,000 sales rank typically. But, uh, you know, people are still buying DVDs. And, uh, you know, it really just spreads out your inventory. And that can go with like books, you know. Um, I don't sell very many books, but big lots again. You know, if they don't have the little black dot on it, you can sell it as new unless the book's damaged, obviously. You know, sourcing goodwill and doing book sales and stuff like that. I know a lot of people that do do these things. I don't do them. I don't really know much about books. I'm not a big reader. You know, but I do know people make a lot of money going to, you know, library sales and, and stuff like that. You know, um, going to the goodwill and stuff like that, searching for books. Over here in California, the Goodwill, they just sharpie the heck out of everything. And they really make sure nobody, uh, resellers anyways, are going to be able to sell stuff from their store. They even write the price on it in sharpie here, at least here in Bakersfield. They put an X over the, the UPC, and then they write the price on the actual item in sharpie. So it's really hard for us, to, well, for me anyways, locally, to source goodwill so I just don't even go in the stores anymore but that is an option for uh, people that live in better areas you know shoes is another thing I, I have sent in some shoes uh, you know it's not something I want to get in big time because I just don't want to deal with the returns and all that stuff and shoes are a very high return category but you know shoes is another thing you could do to spread out your ASINs because if you go to Marshall's you can get you can pick up like 10 15 different shoes of different sizes and each one gives you another opportunity to sell um, I did send in some shoes some sketchers and the prices tanked like thirty dollars on the shoes they're going for 80 when I sourced them and now they're going for the same price that I bought them in at Marshall's and I'm kind of holding off hoping that those people will sell out um, but you know shoes there's another thing sandals are going to be huge as we're going into to summer um, Walmart and Ross used to be gold mine for uh, for sandals. Um, I don't find them anymore. Uh, the brand uh, I used to sell from from Ross two years ago, I was selling hundreds, and for some reason, ever since you know the pandemic, I haven't seen a single one. You know, once Ross reopened, because I think they closed down pretty much every store during the lockdowns and stuff. The, the brand, it's uh, Sanuk, S-A-N-U-K, I believe. They like have a fabric instead of plastic around where your foot would go. And I haven't seen a single one since they reopened after you know, the store closures. And I've been looking, at, I've been go, I go into Ross a few times a week, and I haven't seen them at all. Um, and Walmart sandals, for some reason, they're not on Amazon anymore. I think people probably just use create their own um, UPC code and uses it on Amazon and then just sells them so they don't get competition. You know, in the the sandals there, you type in like say Batman sandals, you'll get a hundred different ones. It's very time consuming to search that way. But, uh, you know, shoes and sandals, you know, swimsuits, apparel will really spread out your ASINs, which will limit you worrying about the price tankers and stuff like that. So that's what I've got for you guys today. Just things that, you know, I'm thinking that, you know, people should be doing to just grow their business and to try to um, circumvent 
uh, people tanking prices because I've been seeing a lot in grocery and toys, uh, especially toys. I'm seeing a lot of price tanking. So if you get into apparel, shoes, and stuff like that, hopefully it won't be so bad. You know, I mean, I did have that experience with those Skechers shoes, and I'm still kind of figuring that one out. But, you know, this is uh, the Amazon game. is it's a free market. People drop their prices all they want. Some people, I don't understand how they uh, can stay in business with the prices that they're running. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. So just go out there, spread out, spread your wings, go to new stores, source new things, uh, grow your uh, amount of listings that you're on, and you will make money. So that's what I got for you guys today. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching.